Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. So on Wilms Front and on theunshackled.net, we've been covering the, the new local uh, freedom fighters as many lockdown measures continue to uh, drag on for no justifiable public health benefits. This new freedom movement was really turbocharged by the, the totalitarian actions of Victoria Police at the Mother's Day protest uh, uh, outside Victoria's Parliament House, uh, which they, they aggressively shut down. Uh, we did a feature on, on Wilms Front on, on Thanos, who was dragged off, off the, the speaker steps mid-speech uh, at that protest. Uh, Thanos is continuing with his regular live streams uh, in his 99% uh, Unite Facebook uh, group, one of the other ad means of that group is another Melbourneian, Rafael Fernandez. He is a skeptic of the push for increased mass surveillance and uh, mass medication on public health grounds. He describes himself as an empowerment community owner, cryptocurrency trader, and entrepreneur. He's launched uh, uh, Bilachi University. Did I say that right? Yeah, you got it right. Yeah. Uh, featuring a Grow Your Wealth uh, masterclass and also vlogs about his life and business ventures on his YouTube uh, channel. Uh, Raphael, thanks for, for joining uh, me on Wilms Front tonight. Well, thank you so much, Tim. That was an incredible uh, introduction. I've never had one before. And um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. I've seen your videos. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into this. Uh, now, uh, you are a, of Spanish uh, uh, ethnic uh, heritage. You actually know Spanish. Yes, I do. Mm. We have a lot of uh, Spanish uh, Spanish fans of the show. They're they're they're, they're probably the probably the biggest uh, non non white uh, demographic after the the Greeks here, which is. <laughs> <laughs> I know as I, I do all the sort of breakdowns and that of sort of uh, my show demographics and that's so I'm aware of those sort of uh, fun facts. Somebody said in the chat, uh, uh, you, uh, you look like Borat. Oh my God. I can't see the chat. So you're going to have to keep me up with it. <laughs> Tell them. Thank you. No. <laughs> Uh, someone's just uh, alerted me to uh, update the the graphics there. So your name is on the the, the screen now. Uh, I just want to start by where you at there the Mother's Day uh, protest? Did you attend that? Yeah, so I was there, uh, and honestly, for the first half, it was incredible. Uh, everyone was, you know, listening to the speakers. Everyone was engaging, and uh, everything was, uh, yeah, going really well until that turn of events. Uh, were you uh, manhandled by police? Did they threaten to fine you? Did they they try to uh, track you down afterwards? No, nah, so um, I actually haven't received a fine at all, uh, which is surprising because I was am one of the admins of the group. Uh, although I wasn't one of the speakers and I wasn't seen as one of the organisers, I know that Fanos was um, unfairly chosen as one of the one of the organisers when he in fact wasn't. No. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, I got out of there as soon as, you know, there was about four arrests that happened with the speakers. And then, yeah, I was gone because by then the crowd already had dispersed. And even if you did get a fine uh, uh, in the mail, uh, you, 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 you wouldn't uh, just suck it up and, and pay it. Oh, yeah, no, nah, I wouldn't pay a cent because I know that there are uh, not-for-profit lawyers that are actually helping out people that uh, got fines and are actually getting them out of it with without having to pay a cent, which is awesome. So I know that uh, I know I understand that there's an Australia wide event on the 30th of May, so there will be lawyers representing us then. And this is the yeah. the Melbourne one at the Botanical Gardens. I'm correct. Yes, correct. And I know that the the New South Wales ones the. Uh, they, uh, I know how this sounds. They've been granted a permit uh, by uh, police for the protest, but of course, yeah, why should you need a permit to, to exercise your uh, your free speech? Uh, has there been? Uh, I'm not sure if you're in the loop. Has there been any, any correspondence with the the organisers and Victoria Police on on this occasion? Because 
well, this is yet to be tested in court, but we are still under a, another state of emergency with the fifth reason you're allowed to, to leave the house. We are st technically still under house arrest. The fifth reason you're allowed to leave the house is to visit friends and family. That's considered uh, essential uh, travel. So it's not until June the 1st when we'll be somewhat uh, liberated. Uh, yes, so I'm actually not too sure about the restrictions like being changed. I haven't been keeping up with that, although I have been hearing around that and I have been seeing like out in public, the amount of people that are just gathering for picnics and stuff, It it's a huge amount of numbers. So I've just heard that you need to stick in your groups of 10 uh, and make sure you're keeping your social distancing and then, yeah, it, it should be right. As long as you aren't breaking that, I believe then it should be good. And they've also said that you can't be talking on the mic. So that's something that can't be happening. So I guess you just got to be, yeah, walking around and staying in your groups. I would say, uh, a saying your views on a microphone that apparently breaches social distancing. How does that work? I, I don't know why they said we can't use a microphone. I just believe that if we do and we have speakers, then for sure the people, the police will try to get involved and shut down whatever's going on as we saw last time. Uh, Margot, uh, my uh, YouTube chat moderator, she, uh, she, she was there at the, the Mother's Day uh, protest. She's a mother herself, so brought her children uh, with her, said, uh, I don't remember seeing Raf at the, the Mother's Day uh, rally, but uh, <laughs> we'll, ta we'll take your word for it that, uh, that, that you were there. Uh, she was doing some uh, some filming, which uh, she sent uh, uh, back to me. She was sort of uh, all over the place. So uh, I think she'll... Uh, Marco, are you going to come uh, this Sunday? I'll ask her a question uh, on air. Uh, we have got a, a super chat on Entropy. Uh, if you have a super chat or want to ask a question, I'll put the, the link in again. Uh, this is from uh, Just Saying. We're being told uh, that to get back to normal, we must install the government's COVID safe app and take any vaccine that gets developed. Oh, this was a question for Craig Kelly. I didn't see it. It was on before. Um, but I'll just read it out. Does he understand the lack of trust that the population feels about parties having constantly sold Australia out? Well, may as well segue uh, into this. We've actually been told not to to download it anymore it's sort of it, it, it it's been sort of what, what would you call it a, a lemon of a, a of a a product uh i assume you haven't downloaded it i haven't uh download loaded it uh, i know that our smartphones they they have a lot of uh apps track a lot of what we what we do but we don't <laughs> basically invite more of it yeah, so um, I don't. I actually don't have the app, and I did find out that the Australian government has been trying to link with, or I believe they already have linked with Google Maps. I don't know the specifics, though. I have also seen that the new iPhone update actually includes something to do with COVID uh, nineteen, like the app. I'm not too sure about those specifics either, but yeah, it just looks like they're still trying to get it on the back end. And I feel like they understand that they pushed it a little bit too much. They got a lot of backlash from it. So I feel like that might be the reason why, you know, we've been told maybe not to download it now. Uh, so thanks for the super chat. Uh, just saying that was for 25 Australian dollars. So uh, it's a very generous of you. And I've also got a poll uh, in Entropy. Should the the state borders be be torn down? Because that's sort of the... Uh, the, the the big well the sort of the new debate at the moment and uh, the irony is even though uh, Victoria's had the the most restrictive lockdown our state borders were never shut you can't go into South Australia because they've shut their borders but you can go to New South Wales the uh, the ACT crossed the uh, the state borders uh, with ease so if you do want to flee as a refugee from Victoria you can. Yeah, so I'm not too sure about the uh, the borders and like the specifics of all of that. Uh, though I do believe it's a, I don't know, I don't necessarily agree, especially with the rules that, you know, I, I there was a point where I can't even go and drive an hour away on my own to literally walk with my dog in the forest. That is just illegal in a sense with these new rules. So um, yeah, a lot of it doesn't necessarily make sense because at the same time you see supermarkets that are packed, you see Chadston Shopping Centre here in Melbourne as well, 
absolutely packed on the weekend. Uh, so these rules and whatever they're bringing out just simply does not make sense. Uh, I know that uh, one of your podcasts is called uh, Journey to Brighton. That's your idea where you want to live. We'll get to your uh, uh, business ventures in a moment. Uh, but uh, obviously, like, you know, don't dox where you live. But uh, where, like, in what sort of area in Melbourne are you based? Uh, south. South. Yeah, south, southeast, but more south. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the, the southeast uh, around uh, Frankston. So I think we're sort of uh, familiar with, uh, obviously, I know uh, Chadston and uh, all, all those all those sort of uh, areas there. I don't, I definitely consider myself uh, more a South Melbourneian. I don't like venturing north of the Yarra. Okay, yep. Yeah. Because it, it, it is a bit of a distance from where you are, I guess, yeah. Oh, and also the, the fact that if, uh, in the in the north, the, the infrastructure is is so bad. All the, uh, the, the, the there's no sort of straight road or anything. Oh yeah, of course, of course. I, I feel like down where Frankston is and all that, it's a lot more open, and uh, obviously because you can tell how they were obviously developed at different times, and I think you got the the better area with that. Uh, we've got a question on entropy from the Australian Vanguard, uh, which is uh, Raymond Foster in the in the chat, to my knowledge. He's in the chat. He'll correct me if I'm wrong. Tim, what are yours and your guests' plans after lockdown ends? Going camping, a festival, or just a, a nice uh, coffee or cappuccino at a cafe? Ha ha. Um, well, the thing is, uh, if you want to go to a cafe, dine in, you have to give your name and contact details, which... I'm not doing that. I'd rather just have a house party. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I I feel the same way. You just get a takeaway or um, just make it at home. And now I want to talk about. Uh, we got sort of sidetracked with the, the 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 super chats and the questions, which well, uh, I encourage the audience to 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 interact. So I'm happy to ha ha happy to uh, to read out their their contributions and have the guests. Uh, contribute. So you're an admin of the 99% uh, Unite Facebook group, which now has uh, 55,000 uh, uh, members. Obviously, it started out how every Facebook does by user creating it, and it's grown rapidly, organically over the past month. Uh, admining such a large group, uh, it would quite, it would be a thankless uh, task, and also it's it's unpaid as well. What's it been like for you? Because obviously you have so many people posting uh, uh, different uh, things. Uh, what are, what have been sort of the trends in posts and, and memberships that you've noticed? So at the very beginning when I started, it was very, very easy with reporting posts or at least taking down reported posts because there weren't that many members at all. Though very recently we've had, I believe there's about 15 or so admins or sorry, moderators now that are just, yeah, checking up on those reported posts. And it's a huge shame because we have very, very high quality content that actually gets uploaded to this group. But as you may know, the, uh, fact checkers so bill gates is the largest or the bill the gates foundation is the largest funder of fact checkers and they tend to take down all these posts of ours i believe there are over 600 and possibly even 650 posts that have been removed now because of being fake news according to facebook uh, which is disappointing and it's uh very very hard to find that information so it gets overrun in a sense by people that are trying to come in and, and cause an issue because at the same time you have others that aren't quite woken up to things that are happening in the world right now they think that everything's going to go back to normal and these people like to come into the group to start trouble they start to troll and abuse other members so i feel like the moderators we have been on top of it and we're going to start taking a lot more stricter stricter measures now when it comes to individuals that want to join the group actually needing them to answer the questions doesn't matter if they lie or not. Uh, I think it's more so that there are less bots or people that are in that aren't, aren't for the cause. 
uh, I, I know uh, for a fact that there's uh, a lot of uh, Antifa Marxist uh, spies and, and stalkers of, of Thanos uh, uh, and yourself. I, I, I noticed uh, one of them on Twitter claim that uh, uh, your uh, vodcast is what the, the ABC comedy show was talking about uh, when they said people uh, shouldn't uh, start a podcast, even though you've been doing it uh, uh, before there. Uh, the, the the pandemic so uh, yeah you're you're getting you're getting noticed and 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 stalked by well I just simply call them freedom haters oh that that's incredible that's the first time I've heard of that ah oh, you know that's awesome <laughs> well I've been uh, dealing with these people since I started the uh, uh, the unshackled in in late uh, 2016 so I, I I know who they are and uh, I. I, I counter uh, cyberstalk them, and I noticed one of them, uh, Cam Smith, uh, is his his name. When I pressed follow on his Twitter account, I didn't even say anything. He blocked me. He just, even though I can still view his tweets like through other <laughs> other means than that, I thought that was funny. Oh, that's hilarious. That's that's just so funny. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you also spoke about uh, yeah, f uh, Facebook fact-checking the, the, the posts uh, uh, in the group. Have, uh, has Facebook threatened action uh, against the group? Like, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, go on. Because uh, I know that uh, with our unshackled Facebook page, we have what's called f uh, page quality, that something gets taken down for, for hate speech or uh, breaching community standards that goes yellow. And then it goes red that you're in danger of being unpublished. I'm not sure how it works for groups. Yes. Yeah, so I, I believe we got our like first like proper strike or however it is on Facebook. Uh, I'm not, I don't know the specifics of it, like YouTube. It's not as obvious in a sense when it comes to groups, but I believe we got our first one like last week. And yeah, as I said before, we've had about 650 posts taken down uh, automatically by Facebook. And um, yeah, we're definitely being alerted in our notifications because it's something that only the admins can see and yeah it, it seems as if the page is getting attacked more and more as time goes on so that's why in a sense we've also got backup pages and that we, we're also on, on other platforms just in case we actually do get taken down because i know of a group that was doing similar stuff to us. They had about 128,000 members and their page just got disabled. So yeah, Facebook has, has been on, on our group and I've been seeing it more and more. So I believe it's only a matter of time until yeah, further action is taken. I, I, I tune in to, to Thanos's, uh vlogs in the group when I can because he's uh, emerged as the, the, the main sort of face of, he doesn't like the word uh, when I interviewed him, anti-lockdown. Uh, activist he, uh, he 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 describes himself as pro-truth anti anti bullshit and the recurring theme in his lives is that if if what people are talking about is is uh, so uh, incorrect then uh, then why do you like what's the the deal with with with, with taking it uh, down don't you realize that you're just creating more suspicion which i agree with that it's it comes down to two things that either you think that people are too stupid to make up their own mind that they can't uh investigate the facts themselves or uh that uh, you're scared that uh, the person you're censoring is is speaking uh truth and Thanos tends to ask more questions than he i, I would say or oh, answers Yes. Yeah, so based on that, um, sorry, I've gone a bit blank. Um, let, let me just, what was the, the very first question sort of thing? And then, and then the second one, just because I got a bit sidetracked on the second part. Yeah. To, uh, 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 talking about that, that this censorship, it just makes people more suspicious. Yes. Yeah, so for sure, hundred percent, because if we were or at least, yeah, us and the people in the group were just saying ridiculous, crazy things. I don't think that there would be so much um, censorship on, on the subject. And as you've seen with Google, YouTube and Facebook, all banning health-related contents that link anything to 5G technology in a sense, it's like, I don't believe that they would be doing this if there wasn't something there. So 
yeah, it, it really doesn't make sense for them to be blocking people trying to speak on it because if there wasn't anything there, then we wouldn't get to any sort of points. And even if we did, it would be proven false anyway. So most certainly by trying to censor people on certain topics, it, it does raise alarm bells that something definitely is happening. I found uh, uh, the, the case study of Alex Jones, I found it so interesting that they basically allowed him free reign on the internet for, for 20 years, and but then they, there was a coordinated takedown at the second half of, of 2018, and it was in the middle of 2019 when Jeffrey Epstein was arrested and and suicided and the lid was lifted on these uh, uh, elite uh, pedophile uh, rings that he was proved right about most of it and it, it was just interesting that that happened six months before all this uh, came out and I noticed even a lot of sort of mainstream people seeking Alex Jones's expertise on that, it, 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 it's those sort of things you sort of reflect on that it was interesting they took him down during that time. Yeah, for sure. And and I believe that Alex Jones is definitely a big one. And it's great because it does get people that are watching him knowing that when he, you know, he might, he might speak all crazy stuff or whatever people believe with the things that he brings up. But then as time goes by and you realize things that he was saying was actually correct, then you you start to listen in to these people more and then you start to understand more and more why they're being censored, why they're being deplatformed. And um, yeah, it's just great because the people that believe in it, they end up believing it even more and actually putting more effort into searching for more information, exactly what the elites don't want. Uh, but yeah, it, it is interesting. Now, what are your exact views on the coronavirus? Uh, do you uh, do you, do you believe uh, uh, that it, it it's uh, contagious? Like, uh, uh, do you believe that some of the containment measures are necessary? What's uh, because a lot of uh, there's actually quite a diversity of views amongst the the anti lockdown uh, advocates. Okay, so when it comes to the virus, look, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I don't study medicine and, and viruses or whatever of any sort. Though when I feel like measures are put in place that simply don't add up based on the numbers that we've been given, that's when I start to ask questions. So when it comes to this virus, if there even is a virus, I... I typically just look at the numbers. What I've seen is that in the last, it's been just over four months now, Australia-wide, we've had, I believe it's 102 deaths. And a whole country was shut down in a sense because of that. And the, the media as well likes to pump up these numbers. Like they talk about the thousands and thousands of cases. They might say, oh, we've had 2,100 cases in the last four months. And then later on, they'll be like, out of the 2,100, we've had 2,050 recovered. They just love using the big numbers. And also at the same time, with the numbers going around all over the world, they're, they're all over the place. So it has me asking, are these tests even accurate in the first place? And the... Uh, it brings me to this point where the president of Tanzania, he came out a couple of weeks ago talking about that he had a goat tested, he had a pawpaw tested, a durian, and one of their native birds tested. So he put a fake name and age on these, sent them in to the testing facility. They came back all positive. So... If this same test is the one that everyone is relying on, on on a global scale and you have these things testing positive, it it does raise a lot of alarm bells. And also with the numbers being pumped up, I believe in a sense as well, where in the US, I believe it was per patient that dies in the hospital, they get the doc the hospitals get a payout of over thirty thousand dollars per person. So there's also incentive as well. So yeah, there, there are a lot of things going on. 
I, I, I do, and I know that how this is, is going to sound, I, I, I do believe that uh, the figures uh, coming uh, out, of, out, of, out of Australia's health department are uh, accurate and because I've analysed them, and you see with the more and more tests that they do, that positive rate continues to, uh, to go down, and it's clear that or at least at the federal level, uh, they don't want uh, this uh, 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 this pandemic and, and lockdown to uh, continue. And I know that I think with two deaths in Tasmania, there's a coroner's inquest about whether they died from coronavirus or or something else. So they are going to look at all the uh, the deaths linked to uh, coronavirus in Australia to determine if they died from coronavirus or whether it was an underlying health condition. This is, there was a 30 year old minor who died in central Queensland today, who they found out after he died had coronavirus, but he had underlying health uh, conditions. So might not have been coronavirus that, that killed it. So we've certainly, uh, I think in Australia, uh, through, uh, through our uh, health bureaucracies avoided what we've seen in New York, where it's just, uh, uh, anyone who's who, who's uh, got the the coronavirus, that, well, if they if they die and they've got traces of the coronavirus, they count as a uh, as a death. The, the the figures in overseas nations, I would I would trust uh, uh, a lot less. Uh, but it's clear Australia is is coming coming out of it. Uh, uh, June one, we're able to go to cafes. Uh, June twenty second is uh, when uh, gyms. Uh, reopen and also uh, theatres, though you probably have to give your information when you when you go in. We're we're on the way out. So, but now the what we're worried of is what what is this new normal going to be? We've talked about the COVID safe safe app. I know that uh, Thanos in his uh, uh, it was when he was uh, being tackled by Victoria Police. Uh, he was talking about microchips and they've been proposed for around 20 years they in my opinion sort of they they, they it, people would see that as a uh, too obvious i think definitely the the covid safe app uh, encouraging people to download that that's sort of like a, a a soft soft chipping since everyone's got most people have got smartphones uh, but we see the queensland state government saying to professional athletes uh, you know, you, you won't be able to play sport here unless you have a, a flu vaccine, which doesn't uh, it doesn't protect you from the coronavirus. So, where do you see the the new normal heading? Well, what I've really been focusing on with this new normal is I've seen that Melbourne City, especially, and I'm sure the rest of Australia, that we have a whole smart city now with AI facial recognition cameras, and I believe that this new word, new normal is making it in a sense that we aren't going to go back to our regular lives, you know, with the same distances that we were to other people. And I do believe it is for these cameras to work in a sense, because we have also seen that a rollout is going to happen with cameras that can check your body temperature. And I believe it was at the beginning of this week now as well, that there are also going to be social distancing cameras installed inside workplaces and these cameras can check you know the meters apart and it can also know who you are uh, even if you've got a face mask on so i don't believe that this these cameras and all this happening is to do with a virus or such a, a shorter term thing because these are measures taking place that are going to affect us from now on for the long term and who knows how they will use this if you get too close to a colleague and then they believe that they had you know they came across someone with COVID or something like that and then you may very well be forced to have a mandatory vaccine something like that um, like with uh, child care workers they can't go back to work unless they have a vaccine and I have close family members that actually are being affected by that. And even when it comes to going visiting nursing homes, you can't go in without having a like a flu vaccine. So it's just going to be interesting with the measures that get put in place from here. I don't believe that we're just going to go out and they're going to say, all right, one by one. Yeah, we're just going to be opening things slowly and then things are going to go normal in a sense with this new normal. I believe that there are more 
plans being made that we are going to be unaware of that are going to most certainly have us being more controlled well the surveillance state has is always wanted to uh, advance they've probably got their greatest uh, grip in the the united kingdom uh, they've got the the most uh, 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 cctv uh, coverage in the in the western world and they've also uh during the the lockdown uh managed uh, managed to to get uh, a lot of brits snitching uh, on their on their fellow brits and sadly uh victoria uh was the the snitch state uh, i'm not sure if you saw that uh, story that the defense force had to be called in to answer uh snitch line uh calls uh, which was uh was quite sad really and the the fact that the uh, the the fine for you know, uh, breaching the uh, chief health officer's uh, directives is sixteen hundred and and fifty eight, I mean you 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 get less uh, for uh, 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 by a court uh, for some pretty other serious offences. Yeah, I, I believe the the fines are most certainly ridiculous and it makes me lose a lot of hope in our people with these snitches as well. Like I saw the numbers, they were in the thousands every single day, uh, over March. Um, and yeah, it, you know, I believe that's where there's two different types of people in this, or at least three. There's most certainly the type that are just, you know, full on mainstream media. This is all they listen to. They shut off to, to anything else and it makes sense for those people to be dobbing on their neighbors because the way that we're being told and communicated how this is is that people are dying left right and center there are so many cases you know different states you you can't be too close to someone or you're gonna get it there's just a, a lot of things um that we're being bombarded with informationally and uh yeah it makes sense for those people and then you have the other people that you know like me if i had my neighbor like having a having a party with a group of just say even five people like i'm not, I'm not gonna call the cops like what is this i've noticed where i live uh when i uh go out uh, for myself for uh, a walk or to the shops there, there's so many people out uh, exercising because uh, during the lockdown that was one of the a the, the reasonable excuses to be outside of the, uh, the house and i was just like good on you <laughs> uh, 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 taking advantage of that and 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 getting out of the house uh, uh, it's and we saw uh, even uh, on mother's day while the uh, victoria police were suppressing that uh, uh, that protest that uh, a lot of Victorians were, as the expression goes, voting with their feet. Uh, Chadston and other major shopping centres uh, were uh, full of people, though apparently uh, it was more important for the poli uh, Victoria Police to uh, to be at your event rather than at these these shopping centres, maybe because you were engaging in uh, political speech. Yeah, well, yeah, well, look, if this had been organised for a gathering to be inside chadston i reckon they would have been more all right with that which is just silly in a sense so i believe that's actually a, a smart move next time doing it in a shopping center or or a supermarket where people are already gathered like that in the first place uh, i noticed the uh some of the anti-lockdown protests over in uh the the uk there was this hilarious clip uh, where, uh, where when they're all like gathered in there they, when the police approach they 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 did exercise moves <laughs> oh yeah, yeah i saw i saw the live streams they were stretching they were doing everything like that like smart on their their end you know uh because they they didn't i don't believe they got caught out i believe it was adelaide that no one i don't believe anyone got arrested there and they were all in their workout clothes as well and uh yeah they were literally just marching and then they'd they keep walking down and then they turn around and say look guys we're going to separate we're going to go this way and it had all the all the police were literally just in shock and they didn't even know what the hell was going on and don't the this is another thing if uh, the government and the police uh, are, are worried about uh, uh, you saying what you're saying about vaccinations or or, or, or 5g or, or microchips then 
leave you alone. Like you're not going to be on the news if the police just stand stand back and there's there's no money shot for the photographers there. That's oh yeah, thing. of course, of course. Uh, it it doesn't make sense, but although they they know that there is truth to what's being spoken, so they need to put their authoritative powers over us to scare people from trying to do anything. And uh, speaking about the the news there, I actually saw footage, and you may not know this, and this was uh, very very disgusting. We're pretty much. The, there was a man with his uh, pram, with his kids. Yeah, I and, saw that. Uh, that was the, that was very um, difficult to watch. Yeah, but did you see when he got he got taken to the other side? And as soon as he was crossing the road with about fifteen police on him, that's when the Channel Nine news lady had turned around and started talking with it all happening behind her, talking about violent protesters and stuff like that. And then the camera was still rolling from. Uh, someone that was right there and then she turns around and says to the police officer and says thank you for organizing that <sighs> that that's shocking yep mm. uh, now now let's finish off by by talking about uh your uh business uh, ventures uh, at the at the moment which you've been uh, uh promoting so uh, uh talk about I've got I've forgotten how to say it again. Uh, uh, oh, Bel a uh, University is that a, a Spanish uh, word? Nah. So the word actually comes from the two words "believe," "achieve," and it's the first four letters of "believe" and the first four letters of "achieve." Ah. Yeah, and I, I was able to like no one else had the the website, the social media, the trademark. So it was pretty cool how I came across that. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, be very blunt with with this next question uh why should people go to you for life uh advice uh, uh to uh, uh by 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 going to your uh to your site uh doing doing your master class uh, uh how are they uh they're going to uh, make their lives better post uh, when the the economy opens up again yeah so one of the things that i really focus on is meditation with those that are within my community and i believe that it's a great thing because we get bombarded with so much negative news from the media we've all had past traumas that we haven't gotten over and i believe that if we're going to stand up to anything that's going on as to whatever you're facing with whether it's work whether it's life whether it's freedom of speech or whatever you are most likely going to freeze in certain situations or fear is going to come into you based on things that you've learned in the past. So where meditation comes in and what I teach my clients is that once you actually get into a meditative state, your brainwaves start to slow down and you are able to get into your subconscious mind. And that's where all your, uh, your programs and habits, your deep programs and habits lie. So we are 95% unconscious and 5% conscious. So really with the majority of things that are happening to us in our lives, we are just reacting based on past experiences. So if you want to find out why you're reacting to certain ways, and if you want to respond to situations that happen to your life going forward, then meditation is a must and i know there's other ways though meditation is what i focus on where you go into your subconscious mind you change the reasons behind your beliefs and then when you're in the real world and certain things come up where you would have reacted you're able to actually perceive it in a different way and respond oh I'll, I'll put your website uh, up on the on the on the screen here oh no that's not it Here we go here. So it's uh, growyourwealth.coach slash free dash uh, training. So this is your 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 website here. Uh, you're also big on on crypto uh, currencies, and and one of the the things that uh, we've noticed uh, during this lockdown is the some businesses refusing to take cash, and there's been a lot of concern about uh, the 
uh, the, the the push to a cashless society, uh, which uh, there's the the ten thousand dollar cash cash ban bill before the 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 federal parliament and crypto. Obviously, it's not a government uh, a government issued uh, currency, um, but it's it gives you a, a, the degree of, of privacy that obviously a credit card and other digital transactions can't give you. Yes, of course. Well, we're most certainly seeing the world uh, getting rid of cash more and more every single year. And we're most certainly going to get to a point where all we have is digital currencies. Right now, we do have governments all around the world that are actually working on bringing out their own digital currencies. So obviously, it's going to be like the US dollar just holding its value. And then they're able to create more online uh, as they do so in a way with printing out cash. So with cryptocurrencies, yes, it does provide more privacy because let's say, for example, if I want to be trading with Bitcoin, except with Bitcoin, I will say it's not seen as a currency in itself. In the cryptocurrency space, it's seen more as a, as a store of value. Though when coins actually do come up where people transact with, like Monero is another one, which is an incredible privacy coin where you can't see how much money my wallet has. I have complete control of it. No one can tell me. Uh, where I can spend it, and if I was to be spending you mo sending you money with this Monero currency, then no one can see on the network how much is being sent to you. They can't see how much you have or anything like that, which is amazing. And you don't need to give in any information of yours to even own a wallet or buy some in the first place on in some places. And a. Uh your uh youtube channel uh i mentioned before you, you you've got a few different uh podcasts uh i'll i'll direct our our audience to your youtube channel but where can people find uh or just uh, uh list the, the 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 podcasts that you have and where can we find them yes yeah, sure so i have a podcast called keeping it raf and i upload to spotify apple podcast and you can find it online as well and with the YouTube channel, I upload my podcast there too, as sometimes I'll actually record as well. And the YouTube channel is just Rafael Fernandez. And that, that channel is a bit random. I like to post a lot of different things. Like I will likely post videos like on topics like this that we've discussed today. I'll sometimes vlog my days if I want to show people the things that are happening on the back end of the business and uh, even just answer questions if there are any. But yeah. And, and to the ABC, if you don't like Raf's podcast, you don't have to listen to it. <laughs> That's hilarious. So good. <laughs> um, I have gone 10 minutes over what I promised uh, you. It's, uh, it's uh, 10 past eight now, so we might wrap it up there. But I'd love to uh, chat with you further, both uh, on, a, on and off the, the air as well, uh, given uh, well, we're on the way out of lockdown and, and you're a local. To me, we can catch up for a non-traceable drink uh, in the near future. Yes, of course. Uh, I look forward to it. That would be awesome. Yeah, and I should be able to uh, cover the uh, uh, the rally on Sunday, so I might see you there as well. So it's oh, awesome. 12 p.m. Uh, Royal Botanical Gardens. Yeah, of course. Yeah, if well. I see you, I'll look out for you, and I should have my camera, so hopefully we can get some content. Yep. Well, I'll see you then, then. But sweet. Thank you very much, Tim. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, have a great one. Thanks everyone for watching this. You too. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.